Welcome back, everybody, for part two of the State of the School Address. I'm Troy McIntosh, and today I want to share a report with you on student life at Worthington Christian. In Matthew 22, Jesus responds to a question from an expert in the law by commanding us to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. And those three aspects of a student's life are distinct from each other, and yet they're so interrelated with each other that it's difficult or even impossible to speak of one without speaking of the other, heart, soul, and mind. Um, and likewise, it's almost impossible to act out of one of those aspects of our lives uh, without acting simultaneously out of one of the, uh, the other two as well. That's what Stephen Garber means when he speaks of life uh, including our education, is meant to be a seamless tapestry of love and learning, work and worship. Our seniors in Mr. Iden's class every year read Stephen Garber's, Stephen Garber's work called Visions of Vocation, and it's something I would highly recommend you put on your reading list if that sounds of interest to you. But um, it, that is what we want student life uh, to be like at Worthington Christian, this this sense of a seamlessness between love and learning, work and worship, so that all aspects of a student's life uh, come together to help form them uh, in the way that they were meant to be. We have 908 students currently at Worthington Christian in grades kindergarten through 12, and in many ways it represents the most diverse student body we've ever had, and that stretches across um, ethnic lines, across socioeconomic lines, across ability lines, geographic lines. Um, in so many ways, uh, 2020 Worthington Christian much better represents the body of Christ in Central Ohio than any previous student body we've had, and that's something that we are particularly pleased with. Uh, we love and are proud of every single one of those 908 students, and that's true um, whether they uh, um, excel uh, in some aspect of school and are among those students, or whether they're among the group of students that school is really difficult for and can be a real struggle for. Uh, we're just as proud of those students uh, as anybody else. Uh, everyone, all 908 of them, bring their inherent worth and value as a created person uh, into our school, and we love and value them for that. Our students, their academic uh, performance uh, aggregately is, continues to be very strong. Our elementary school Terra Nova scores uh, are trending upward, uh, which has been difficult to do because five years ago even they were uh, very high at that point. But as you can see, our median percentile rank at each grade level and in every content area were above the 75th percentile rank uh, this past spring which means that half of our students are outscoring 75% of their uh, classmates nationwide. And that's a very good sign. Our middle school scores are very similar. And as a matter of fact, that was reflected in the National Blue Ribbon Award that the uh, middle school was uh, presented with in November. And then our high school ACT scores uh, continue to be strong as well. This past year's graduating class, a class of 2019, uh, their average median ACT score placed them uh, in just under the 80th percentile nationwide. Again, meaning half of our students scored above the 80th percentile nationally, which is a tremendous sign of uh, performance out of our students. Now, one thing I want to do is caution us as I share those really good test scores. I want to caution us not to weigh those too heavily. Standardized test scores are not the only indicator of your child's growth, uh, their future success, or most importantly, their worth uh, as a person. And they're probably not even the primary indicator of those. Uh, it's the easiest to understand, it's the easiest to communicate, and the easiest to quantify, so we tend to default to those measures uh, of success and performance but sometimes that causes us to place too much emphasis on them. Uh, the same thing can frankly be said of grades. Uh, so we want to look at a fuller picture of our students' growth and performance, and I want to share some of those things today in a, in a, a little bit amount of time that we have. 
Uh, but I want to caution us not to become too fixated on standardized test scores, even though we score very well uh, in the aggregate. So let me give you a small glimpse of some other areas of student life at WC. Uh, things that are happening in the classroom, on the playgrounds, uh, and some of the extracurricular activities. In the elementary school, uh, a, a tremendous project that Mrs. Amy Decker uh, led in the art classes this year was to uh, do some ceramic work where the students made um, uh, ceramic frogs. And as a piece of artwork, that was a, uh, a very fitting and appropriate thing for her to do. What she did was uh, she wanted the students to create a piece of art that they would be able to use as an encouragement to somebody else. And so using the acronym of FROG, some of you are aware with, it shows up on wrist brands and so forth, but fully rely on God. She asked each of those students, after they created their piece of art, to give it to somebody that they would be able to use as an encouragement for them to be relying on God. Somebody who was could use some uh, encouragement, that just needed a little bit of um, uh, someone coming alongside them and, and recognizing maybe a struggle that they have. And so we had... Uh, dozens of students create these pieces of art that could then be used as an encouragement to somebody else. Uh, also in the elementary school, uh, one of our fourth graders in Mr. Gantz's class, Noah Flanagan, uh, approached Mr. Gantz uh, with the idea of creating a recess Bible study. Uh, he wanted uh, to, to, with his classmates, be able to dig in uh, a little bit more into some passages of Scripture. And so for the last several months, uh, uh, the majority of his classmates, as well as some from other fourth grade classes, have been giving up Tuesday afternoon recesses and, uh, along with Mr. Gantz's guidance, uh, have been leading uh, those fourth graders in a study of James chapter 3. Again, love and learning, work and worship, the seamless tapestry uh, across schooling. In the middle school, one of the things that is exciting going on right now is BizTown. Um, and so in partnership with Central Ohio Junior Achievement, our middle school students have been interviewing for and uh, positions in BizTown. So uh, positions for bank president, mayor, uh, the full spectrum of positions that might take place uh, and exist in a, in a town. Um, our students have been spending the last several weeks prepping for uh, that, interviewing for positions so that uh, when they uh, end up going to Junior Achievement's BizTown, the BizTown site, in the upcoming weeks, uh, they will spend a day running the entire town, learning what it's like to take in accounts uh, at the bank, learning what it's like to pass legislation and execute um, uh, laws in a city government form. That's a great experience to give our middle schoolers practical uh, interaction with how businesses and government works, and that's a, a great opportunity for them. A couple weeks ago, I was walking through our middle school hallways, and I saw a couple girls putting together a bulletin board, and I stopped and looked at it, and it, the heading of the bulletin board was prayer locker, and so I stopped and asked them what they were doing, and they told me about an idea that they had and were beginning to institute uh, they found out that we had an empty locker at the middle school, and they asked permission if they could use that as a prayer locker. And uh, the prayer locker is a place where students at any time during the day can anonymously slip in um, a prayer request uh, that they might have. And then at the end of each week, uh, the students who are heading this particular project up will go to the locker, open it, and uh, take out the prayer request, and then they spend time praying for uh, their classmates' uh, needs. What a great idea. And I just want to, uh, when I see students taking that kind of initiative, it, again, it reminds me of the value and benefit of what we're doing uh, here at WC. Some things that are going on at the high school. Uh, many of you attended the most recent musical performance uh, that the theater department put on, Shrek the Musical. It took place last week. An outstanding um, performance. Uh, by those students. I want to thank uh, Mr. O'Rourke and everybody who participated in that. That particular production was part of um, a new um, project that CAPA, Columbus Area Performing Arts uh, Group, is doing this year called the Marquee Awards. And they've invited 19 schools from Central Ohio to participate. 
in this uh, new award project that is being modeled after the Tony Awards uh, on Broadway. And so Kappa it sends judging, a judging panel, to each of those schools' uh, drama performances, and then they are graded and ranked, and awards are given out at the end of the year. The, the purposes of them, according to Kappa, are to recognize and honor and encourage excellence in high school musical theater through a constructive review process of nominated pr uh, productions by qualified adjudicators. So our students are going to be getting professional feedback on that. Uh, some of them may even be up for uh, awards. Uh, there'll be ongoing professional development that's available through this. Um, it is a tremendous opportunity for our theater department to participate in that and so excited about the possibilities that that brings. Uh, this year alone, uh, we will be producing five uh, dramatic performances. There'll be four at the high school, one at the middle school, which has uh, just started its practices uh, this week, and um, uh, that'll continue next year at the upper school. Uh, we'll continue to have upper school performances. We'll have some that are just available for 7th and 8th graders, so they can continue to get experience uh, and in lead roles and supporting roles at their level, and then we'll continue to have um, kind of ninth through 12th grade performances as well. One of the other things I love to highlight uh, in the high school is our internship academy. And this is an opportunity for students to apply to gain entrance into this program. And uh, once they're selected for it, they spend a semester uh, working at um, local businesses or organizations in the afternoons um, as an intern. And so they'll come to school for uh, the first couple hours of the day and then around lunchtime they'll depart and the rest of the afternoon is spent uh, working at their internships. This year our interns were uh, functioning at a variety of locations including the governor's office, the Ohio Supreme Court, uh, a financial planning office, uh, physical therapists and other med, uh, medical uh, related offices, uh, marketing department, and then a whole variety of other uh, local businesses throughout the area. So we have a, a great number of contacts and, and we really try and place those students in areas of interest to them. Each of them complete two internships uh, during the semester and uh, it's a great experience and a great example of us recognizing that we want our students' education to be more than just uh, uh, career training. We're really emphasizing the vocational aspect of it, the sense of calling and how their work fits into their larger role as believers and followers of Jesus Christ. And this internship academy is a great opportunity for that. Turning now to athletics, um, this past, uh, the past 12 months have been incredibly busy with athletics. Uh, we love the opportunities that athletic program brings to student life. And that's true for the student who is an all-state uh, caliber performer, and that student who just practices every day, but only gets to see minimal playing time. We believe there's a huge benefit uh, for both of those, and that the value is just as great for the latter as it is for the former. Um, and so this, in the last 12 months, we have participated in 575 competitions at the middle school and high school level, over 17 sports uh, with 637 student athlete participants over that time. That's a tremendous opportunity for our kids to get involved in that. Uh, we've been successful at it too. Uh, we've won five league championships, a district championship. Our girls bowling team for the first time is heading to the state bowling tournament on Saturday. Uh, we've had our state football team qualify for the playoffs for the first time in school history. And then a special shout out to Lena Morgan for bringing home the uh, Division II State Diving Championship uh, just last week from Canton. Uh, uh, congratulations to those. But again, uh, we love just having students participate, learning what it's like to be part of a team, committing to something that has a bigger meaning than just themselves. Um, great opportunities uh, there as well. Uh, you probably know that we host weekly chapels, uh, and some of the things that have been going on uh, in those uh, chapels at the elementary school, there's been a focus on uh, I, learning more about uh, the names of Jesus, 
how those pertain to his character, what they teach us about uh, his character, what they mean uh, for us in different personal um, uh, applications. At the middle school, they've been talking about themes this year of renewal, love, uh, unity, and identity. At the high school, there's been an emphasis on the Apostles' Creed and really digging down into some of the fundamental doctrines of our faith, giving our kids really the fundamental groundwork uh, for understanding what uh, faith in Christ means. Uh, those are tremendous uh, benefits and blessings uh, in those weekly times with our students. Wish I had more time to talk about student life. There are literally thousands and thousands of angles and approaches uh, that I could take with this. And we could talk about the, the, the Dominican Republic trip that our seniors will be taking and the ongoing ministry that we have in Santo Domingo down there. We could talk about the 4,000 hours of community service that our students have performed this year already uh, during school hours. Uh, but again, maybe the most important thing that is hard to quantify, it's that day-to-day -day student life that takes place, the interaction with their classmates, the relationships with their teachers, um, that we think play the most important role in developing that, that seamless tapestry that Garber talks about. Love and learning, work and worship that are so inter, uh, interrelated that they're difficult to separate out from each other. We love having students here at WC and interacting with them on a daily basis and being part of their lives and seeing them grow and develop into the people that God meant them to be. Uh, would love to talk more about student life with you. I'd uh, love to hear stories maybe that uh, your student has experienced. If so, I would love to have you email me some of those, hearing from uh, students and even alumni are some of the best parts uh, that I have for my job. Thanks for joining me again tonight. Next week, I'll be coming back to you and be giving a brief report on our uh, financial positions and the finances of the school. So uh, look forward to seeing you again next Wednesday. Thanks.